Okay, so you saw what the experiment looked like. Now let's look at these calculations. So I can take each glider and put them on the balance. And the gliders are, in this case, intended to be much different, M1 less than M2. And the way that worked is I put a couple of masses onto one of the gliders, these. But this, this mass of 301.04 grams, that's with everything. That includes this flag, this bumper, these masses. So we weigh it just as it was used in the experiment. And then the same thing for the other one. And the reason that's different is because it didn't have these. Uh, when you are using these, it is important that you put the same amount on each side so it's balanced. All right. And then this is the width of the flag. We, this is a small flag. I was actually using big flags in my little demonstration there. It doesn't matter um, as long as you record the actual width of the flag you're using. This is the time it took for uh, glider one to go left to right through that gate. This is the total time for glider one to go left to right and right to left through the gate. Um, so to get just the leftward time, we subtract the two times and we get this. I'll show you more how to do that when we're in class and you need to do that. Um, the first one did not have an initial time because it was not moving initially, glider two. And then this is how long it took glider two to get through that, that gate that was on the right. Okay. So to figure out the velocities, all we need is the flag width and the time it took. So we have our three times up here and we just divide the flag width by the time. Okay, and that's done for all three. Note that glider one was moving to the left after the collision, so it has a negative velocity. Okay, uh, all of our calculations are gonna be done in SI, in meters per second. So we take our mass that was given in grams up above, but we've converted into converted to kilograms, and then we use the velocities that we just calculated to see what the momentum is, okay? This zero here, that's the momentum of cart two, or glider two initially, and it's zero because it was not moving initially. In the final state, we had glider one moving to the left, so it has this negative momentum, and glider two, the bigger mass, was moving to the right at this speed, Okay, it had a positive velocity. And then overall, the momentum of the whole system was this value. So before the collision, it was 0.232 kilogram meters per second. Afterward, 0.228 kilogram meters per second. Now, what do we expect? We expect that the momentum is gonna be the same before and after the collision, okay? We expect that PI equals PF All right, new pen. The PI equals PF when F net is zero, when the system is isolated. Okay, and so we're using an air track in an effort to make friction as small as possible and make the track as level as possible. And so the intent is for these to be the same. And we can look at how much different they are. We look at the percent difference. So we subtract the two from each other and we divide by the original one. They're both pretty similar, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but you can see they're only 2% different, and so that's really good, okay? For an experimental result, getting within 2%, that's fabulous. All right, now what about kinetic energy? So the kinetic energy of glider one prior to the collision is this, this much, one half mv squared. The second glider was not moving initially, so it has no kinetic energy initially, and that is this much kinetic energy. After the collision, we had glider one moving to the left. Not that it matters because we're gonna square this, but this is the kinetic energy of glider one. This is the kinetic energy of glider two. Do make sure when you put this into your calculator that you have it in parentheses, or just don't write in the negative sign on the kinetic energy calculation because this should be a positive number. So either way, make sure you get it right. 
uh, when you're doing this, make sure you do enter the negative sign because that is intended to be negative there. All right, um, glider two's kinetic energy, add them up and it comes out to 0.123. Now, even though we were using these rubber bouncers, these rubber bands for the bouncers, it was still not an elastic collision. We still lost almost 10% of the kinetic energy. Now that's not too much, but we still, we could do this over and over and we're not gonna get it to be zero. We're not gonna get it to be 1%. Um, it's, it's gonna be a sig significant amount, okay? So this was expected. So that collision was inelastic, okay? Even though we used rubber bands for the bouncers. All right, so that's the idea. And your job is to do this for case two. Okay, so the experiment was conducted for you and the data is here. Uh, one difference is that glider one does not go back through the gate. It actually just stops. And so that makes your calculations that much easier. Case three, we're gonna do in class. You're gonna collect the data and do the calculations. Case four is one that's been totally done for you, but this is a stick together collision. And so this is when they stick together, it's perfectly inelastic. So T1F equals T2F equals TF. And this will also make the calculations easier. Okay, so this goes through the full calculations there. You can see a large amount of kinetic energy loss. You can see the uh, momentum was about the same before and after as we would expect for any case where F net is equal to zero. And then case five is the one you're gonna do the calculations ahead of time, data provided, you go through and do the full calculations. All right, contact me if you have any questions.